Hello everybody and welcome to the book haul that should not have happened. This year I set out to only read books on my shelves unless there was a readathon of some sort that I needed to like get a book for, which that's what happened in the month of February because I wanted to participate in middle grade March and I wanted to purchase some physical books for middle grade March because I don't have a lot of middle grade on my shelves. I think I only had like two middle grade books on my shelves already. So I looked up the Book of Boy on Book Outlet because that is the group read for middle grade March and I found it for pretty cheap on Book Outlet and so obviously in order to get the book I of course want free shipping too so I needed to buy at least $35 worth of books so that's what I did. So then because I was already buying books I also popped into my local Goodwill and I bought a few more books, not too many. I didn't go crazy. So I have a book haul of about 13 books to show you, which I'm a little bit disappointed in myself, but there are also books that I am genuinely excited to read and I will get to eventually. So we're not going to be too hard on ourselves, even though I also sort of want to beat myself up over it, but I'm not going to. Let's go ahead and talk about the books that I picked up in the month of February. The first book that I picked up, obviously, I've already talked about it, The Book of Boy. Um, I actually finished this book last night, so I have also accumulated some thoughts on this book. I'm going to save those thoughts for you. Um, I'll give you an idea though. In general, I didn't love this book. Um, I'll, I'll wait to talk about it for another day, but The Book of Boy by Katherine Gilbert Murdoch is a medieval middle grade, which is really uniquely set. I don't think I've seen a lot of medieval middle grade. I thought it was historical fiction and it actually turns out to have a lot more um, kind of fantastical elements to it which I didn't know about it going in. But um, it was very well written but again I'll save some of my thoughts. I have thoughts <laughs> for another day for, for a wrap up in the future but that's one book that I bought and already read. <laughs> So yay, uh, we're not doing too bad if I bought a book and already read it, so that's good. The next book that I bought for middle grade March was The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin, and this fulfilled the mystery challenge. Um, I did not previously own a middle grade mystery, so I picked this one up on Book Outlet as well, and I think I paid like $3 for it or something. This is a mystery including a will. Um, someone dies and there's this will and I believe he's sort of set up a competition to the people in his will and they have to like solve a mystery because the will tells them to or something like that. It reminds me a little bit of Ready Player One has a little bit of kind of similar a similar uh, plot. It's a new very metal winner so um, I'm expecting great things obviously. <laughs> Although the Book of Boy was also Oh, and I think a Newberry um, Honor, but I didn't like that one as much. I don't think it won, but this one actually won. So we'll see what happens. And if we like this one, I'll be reading it very, very soon, at least by the end of March. The other books that I picked up were not necessarily books I was planning on reading this month. They are just going to be added to the hordes of books that I am collecting for a rainy day. So the next book I have to show you is Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell by Susanna Clark. This was on Book Outlet and they didn't have a lot more copies left, so I felt like I should snatch it. Um, I recently saw Reagan from Peru's Project read this book and it's a monster of a book and it took her a long time to get through. I'm sure it will also take me a really long time to get through. Um, I, I saw she, she didn't love this book, but it looked really intriguing and I wanted to try it for myself. This book is a debut novel of Susanna Clark's and it is about music, musicians, not, I knew I was going to say that, magicians, not musicians. It's about magicians in England in the year 1806 and that's all I know. <laughs> I think there's, I think it's fantasy. I think there's some fantastical elements in it. I don't tend to read synopsises before I buy books. <laughs> so uh, there you go. Let me know if you've read this one. It is huge. I don't know when I will read it. Maybe for like a tome topple readathon or something. Yeah, it's like 850 pages. So quite a monster of a tome. The next book I picked up is actually a middle grade book. 
and that is Keeper of the Lost Cities. Although I wasn't planning it on reading it in middle grade March. Maybe I'll squeeze it in. I'm not sure though because it's a series and I'm not big on starting a new series right now. Before I finish some other things, I want to finish the Anne of Green Gable series and reread the Harry Potter series and Lord of the Rings series before I start another series, but we'll see. Um, this has been definitely a booktube favorite that I've seen quite a few people read. Um, another uh, middle grade fantasy, I believe. This follows 12 year old Sophie Foster and she is a telepath, which means she can hear the thoughts of everyone around her and she meets a boy named Fitz who also is a telepath and then I guess she discovers maybe Fitz takes her to this place where there's other telepaths. Heard good things again also from Reagan at Peru's project. You can tell I buy a lot of book recommendations based on her channel and I've just seen a lot of other people really enjoy this too though so Keeper of the Lost Cities excited to get to that someday. Next up I have a really beautiful book. This is Crown of Feathers by Nikki Pau Preto. I saw Elliot Brooks read this book and really like it. I think the sequel is coming out this year or possibly already came out and this is a fantasy, YA fantasy about um, phoenixes. I believe there is also a relationship between two sisters and they are phoenix writers or one of them is a phoenix writer. Again, I don't want to know too much. I just like to be surprised by books and this just has gotten some hype around booktube a little bit. And I also heard it's a little bit underhyped. It didn't get enough hype because I guess it's a good book or so people say. So I'm excited to get to this. Very beautiful cover. Next up I picked up Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. This was really big a couple years ago and there's a Netflix show on it now, a Netflix adaptation. I haven't watched the Netflix adaptation. I don't know much about it. All I know is the pictures of the blindfolds that I've seen. I don't want to know anything about it because I think the less you know about thrillers the better and I have been just slowly collecting thrillers and not getting through them very quickly but I'm looking to find some thrillers that I like and this sounds like one that is very well loved. I've heard it's very creepy and a little bit disturbing and it's not a genre that I know much about. I haven't read a lot of creepy books, really barely any. And so again, I'm just kind of collecting thrillers and gonna read a bunch of them and see what works for me. Maybe I'll even do like a separate video vlog on just reading a bunch of different types of thrillers and seeing what works for me. I think that would be a fun video to do. But now I own Bird Box, so um, it is in my collection. The next book I have to talk about is How to Walk Away by Catherine Center. This book, I have seen a few people talk about. I think I think Krista from Books and Jams really liked this book and it is an adult contemporary novel. I think possibly considered in the chiclet genre and I've seen this author release something last year too. Uh, had a, like a blue cover. Um, can't remember. Oh how, like things you save in a fire or something like that and I actually was really close to picking that one up but then I ended up reading something else but I figured I'll start with this one with her. I've seen some really good reviews for it. From what I understand it's about a woman who kind of has a perfect life and she has all these great things going for her and then I think maybe there's like an accident or something that happens and that changes her life and she gets put in the hospital and that's where our drama starts. So heard really good things about this book. Um, be curious to know if you have read it but I haven't seen anything negative about this book so when I'm in an adult contemporary mood I'll be picking this one up. The last book that I got from Book Outlet was The Last Nimsara by Kristen Kicharelli possibly is the last name. Not sure how, how to pronounce that exactly. Um, this is a YA fantasy and I believe there's dragons and a dragon slayer, a girl who becomes a dragon slayer. It looks like it's really easy to read. It doesn't have a lot of text on every page. Oh, the text is small but it looks like a really fast read. I know this is a series too but I don't know how many books there are in the series. Let me know if you've read this one. I haven't seen a lot of people talk about it but I know I've seen it somewhere and I've heard it talked about in a positive light. So let me know if I should prioritize this soon. Next I picked up some books that I found at Goodwill and the first of those is The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. I've seen various booktubers talk about Joe Abercrombie 
This is the first Law trilogy. This is book one. I think it's trilogy. And I've heard it's a little bit dark. It's a little bit got like the the grimy like Game of Thrones kind of feel like a grim dark fantasy and I haven't read a lot of those I don't always love the grim dark genre but I've heard really good things about Joe Abercrombie in general so I need to look into it because I, I'm not sure this is a good place to start with him but I know this is a trilogy that I've seen a lot of people talk about so it was two dollars I picked it up next up I found the night circus by Aaron Morgan Stern and I've recently seen a lot of people talk about her latest release, which was The Starless Sea. And I remember reading the synopsis to The Starless Sea and being like, wow, that sounds like a book I would really like. I've seen a lot of mixed reviews about The Starless Sea. Some people love it, some people hate it. A lot of people say it's not as good as the first one. So I figured I'd start here. And since I found it for $2, why not? And I think it's about a magical traveling circus and it's got that like circus carnival vibe to it and uh, that's all I know. It's a very pretty cover. I like the art design of the cover of this book. So I'm excited to own an Erin Morgenstern book and I've heard a lot of really good things about her writing so hopefully I will enjoy it. Next up I picked up Lincoln in the Bardo by George Saunders. This is a historical fiction novel. It also won the Man Booker Prize which uh, is a really big deal. It's got all these all these accolades and awards and this is about Abraham Lincoln and it centers around his 11 year old son passing away which from what, what I understand was was a real real event in Abraham Lincoln's life and this book sort of spins a story on, on that one event in Abraham Lincoln's life and I've heard really good things about this I saw um, Elliot Brooks again, her husband read this book and really liked it. I saw that he talked about it. So I saw it, wanted to pick it up. I love a good historical fiction novel. I think it's one of my favorite genres to read from. So I've heard really great things about this one. Next up, I have to show you The Secret History by Donna Tart. I'm apparently collecting Donna Tart books as well because I also picked up The Goldfinch at a used bookstore um, like maybe a year ago still haven't gotten to it but now I have two Donna Tartt books so hopefully I like her writing <laughs> uh, I'll hopefully at least like one of them but The Secret History is about a group of college students New England college students who are misfits and who discover a way of thinking and living that is a world away from the humdrum existence of their contemporaries so I don't know much about it the synopsis is very vague actually um, that's fine. I don't need to know anything, but I have heard mixed things good and bad about this author and also this book. It looks like a pretty hefty, hefty read over 500 pages, pretty small font, but I will save it for when I'm in the mood for it. And the last book I have to show you is a lighthearted book and it is Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. I don't know a lot about romance and I especially haven't read any historical romance maybe maybe read a little bit I don't know I can't really remember maybe read like one before but romance is a genre I am curious about getting into and trying for myself and historical romance seems like a type of romance that I might enjoy more than a contemporary romance so we'll see I've heard good things about this one it is set in England 1879 following Annabelle Archer she's one of the first female students at Oxford University so that's cool her scholarship demands that she recruit men of influence to champion the rising women's suffrage movement her target is the cold and calculating Duke of Montgomery commander of Britain's politics but Montgomery wouldn't be the kingdom's greatest strategist if he couldn't turn the tables and confront Annabelle with an altogether different offer. Locked in a battle with rising passion and impossible attraction, Annabelle will learn just what it takes to topple a duke. I hope you enjoyed my dramatic reading of the back of the book. <laughs> I'm down to try some light fluffy historical romance and maybe it will lead to me exploring the genre even more. We'll see. Those are all the books that I picked up recently. I hope I will not have another book haul video for quite some time. Maybe an unhaul video would be a good one to do because I am accumulating some of 
those that I need to get rid of. But you should not see another book haul from me for a while, or at least that's the goal. But you never know what's going to happen because books are fun to buy. Thanks for watching my video today. Let me know if you've read any of these, if you have any thoughts on any of them, and if I should prioritize any of them in particular. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Keep reading great books, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.